posterior approach to the distal humerus with great illustrations. This video has been produced from a book source. We would like to thank editors Stanley Hoppenfeld, Pete DeBoer, Richard Buckley, and we would like express special thanks for the medical illustrator Hugh A. Thomas. Short summary of operation. Identify the gap between the lateral and long heads of the triceps muscle. Proximally develop the interval between the two heads by blunt dissection, retracting the lateral head laterally and the long head medially. Distally split the common tendon along the line of the skin incision by sharp dissection. Identify the radial nerve and the accompanying profunda brachii artery. Incise the medial head of the triceps in the midline. Strip the muscle off the bone subperiosteally. The radial nerve, which runs just proximal to the origin of the muscle in the spiral groove, must be identified and preserved. The muscle must be stripped from the bone below the level of the periosteum to avoid damaging the ulnar nerve, which pierces the medial intermuscular septum. Preserve as much soft tissue attachment to the bone as possible. The midline posterior approach to the humerus is classically extensile providing excellent access to the lower three-fourths of the posterior aspect of the humerus. One as is true for all other approaches to the humerus, the posterior approach is complicated by the vulnerability of the radial nerve, which spirals around the back of the bone. The uses of this surgical approach include the following. 1. Open reduction and internal fixation of fractures of the humerus. In fractures in which the radial nerve is transected, classically displaced transverse fractures of the mid shaft of the humerus, this incision exposes the nerve as it traverses the back of the humerus. 2. Treatment of osteomyelitis. 3. Biopsy and excision of tumors. 4. Treatment of nonunion of fractures. 5. Exploration of the radial nerve in the spiral groove. 6. Insertion of retrograde humeral nails. Position of the patient. Two positions of the patient are possible during surgery. A lateral position on the operating table with the affected side uppermost or a prone position on the operating table with the arm abducted 90 degree figure. A sandbag should be placed under the shoulder of the side to be operated on and the elbow should be allowed to bend and the forearm to hang over the side of the table. A tourniquet should not be used because it will get in the way. Landmarks and incision. Landmarks. The acromion is a rectangular bony prominence that forms the summit of the shoulder. The olcranon fossa should be palpated at the distal end of the posterior aspect of the arm. Precise palpation is difficult because the fossa is filled with fat and covered by a portion of the triceps muscle and aponeurosis. The fossa is filled by the olcranon when the elbow is extended. Incision Make a longitudinal incision in the midline of the posterior aspect of the arm, from 8 cm below the acromion to the olcranon fossa, figure. Internervous plane. There is no true internervous plane. Dissection involves separating the heads of the triceps brachii muscle, all of which are supplied by the radial nerve. Because the nerve branches enter the muscle heads relatively near their origin and run down the arm in the muscle's substance, Splitting the muscle longitudinally does not denervate any part of it. In addition, the medial head, which is the deepest head, has a dual nerve supply consisting of the radial and ulnar nerves. Splitting the medial head longitudinally does not denervate either half. See figure. Superficial surgical dissection. Incise the deep fascia of the arm in line with the skin incision. Figure. The key to superficial dissection lies in understanding the anatomy of the triceps muscle. This muscle has two layers. The outer layer consists of two heads. The lateral head arises from the lateral lip of the spiral groove, and the long head arises from the infraglenoid tubercle of the scapula. The inner layer consists of the third head, the medial, or deep, head, 
which arises from the whole width of the posterior aspect of the humerus below the spiral groove all the way down to the distal fourth of the bone. The spiral groove contains the radial nerve. Thus, the radial nerve actually separates the origins of the lateral and medial heads. See figure. To identify the gap between the lateral and long heads, begin proximally, above the point at which the two heads fuse to form a common tendon. Figure. Proximally, develop this interval between the heads by blunt dissection, retracting the lateral head laterally and the long head medially. Distally, the muscle will need to be divided by sharp dissection along the line of the skin incision. Figure. Many small blood vessels cross the muscle at this level. These need to be coagulated individually. Deep surgical dissection The medial head of the triceps muscle lies below the other two heads. The radial nerve runs just proximal to it in the spiral groove. See fig. Your. Incise the medial head in the midline, continuing the dissection down to the periosteum of the humerus. Then, strip the muscle off the bone by epiperiosteal dissection. Figure. Dangers. Nerves. The radial nerve is vulnerable in the spiral groove. After it is identified, however, the nerve is safe. To avoid problems, never continue the dissection down to bone in the proximal two-thirds of the arm until the nerve has been identified positively. See figure. The ulna nerve lies deep to the medial head of the triceps in the lower third of the arm and may be damaged if that muscle is elevated off the humerus in anything but an epiperiosteal plane. Vessels. The profunda brachii artery lies with the radial nerve in the spiral groove and is similarly vulnerable. See figure. How to enlarge the approach. Extensile measures. Proximal extension. The bone cannot be exposed effectively above the spiral groove using the posterior approach. At this point, the deltoid muscle, which is the outer layer of the musculature, also crosses the operative field. More proximal exposures should be accomplished by the anterior root. Distal extension. The skin incision can be extended distally over the olecranon. Deepening the approach provides access to the elbow joint via an olecranon osteotomy. Subscribe Orthopedics Trauma in YouTube. Thanks for watching.